product versus period cost. Now these are two concepts that you may have heard of in financial accounting because this is how we do our income statements in financial accounting. But let's talk about them from a managerial accounting perspective. Product costs are costs that include all the costs that are involved in acquiring and making the product. So these are costs associated with the product. Again, we're really creative with our names. There are three types of product costs. There's three ways we can break down product costs. The first one being direct material. Direct material, as the name implies, direct is a direct cost, but it's also a product cost. And these are the primary materials that is easily and conveniently traceable to the final product. For the example of the house, the lumber would be a direct material because it's easily traceable. The cost of the lumber is easily traceable to that one house, the final finished product of the house. That would be direct material. The second one is direct labor. Direct labor are the labor costs that are easily and conveniently traceable to the final product. So again, this is a direct cost because it says direct in the name, but this is the cost of the wages or the salaries of the people who are actually making the product. A lot of times direct labor is called hands-on labor. That's kind of how you, you can categorize it. So the people who actually have their hands on. The foreman probably would not be considered direct labor because they don't actually have the hands-on in building the house. We're talking about the employees that have the hands-on. The third category, is what we call managerial accounting. Managerial accounting are all of the factory costs that cannot easily or conveniently be traced directly to a specific unit produced. The best way to think about managerial accounting is it's the indirect cost that's associated with building the product. So if it is a cost going into the product, the, the creation or the manufacturing of the product, and it's not direct material and it's not direct labor, then by default it falls into the manufacturing overhead category. For the building of the house, an example with this would be nails or the hammer. Now, these are all carried on as an asset until the final product is sold. So we're going to keep it on our balance sheet as an asset until the final product is sold. And once it's sold, then we're going to expense it through the accounting uh, account called cost of goods sold, which is an account we've talked about in financial accounting. Now, that's product cost. Now, let's look at period cost. Period costs are a little different, but again, we still kind of use that same creative avenue to create these names. Period costs include all the costs associated with accounting periods. So cost associated period is a period cost. Now we can break these down into two categories. Now the naming of these two categories can be a little different depending on who's teaching your class or who, what book you're reading. But for the basics, uh, we look at it as one being the selling expenses. Uh, this includes all the costs necessary to secure customer orders and get the final product into the hands of the customers. So this would be like the salaries of your sales agent or the commission of your sales agent, maybe the cost of the sales agent's car. These would all fall into selling because it all deals with selling the product, a finished good. And then we also have what's called uh, administrative expenses. Sometimes you can see general in there, uh, but administrative expenses in, in, in general. Um, these include all costs associated with the general management of the organization. So these are going to be dealing with your salaries of your CEO, your CFO, maybe the salaries of your legal team, the salaries of your accountants. These people, these employees of the company have nothing to do with the creation directly associated with the creation of the product, but they are more associated with how the company runs. So that's why they're considered period costs because they don't have their hands directly or really indirectly when it comes to the creation of the uh, product. Now these are expensed as they're incurred. So as we use the, the, the employees, as we use their services uh, and we start paying them, that's when we're going to expect, uh, expense them. Now, to kind of put this into perspective, because we, we can break these things down. If we look at a product's total cost or a company's total cost, if total cost is all the costs, we can break these down into two categories. We can break them down into product cost and period cost, just like what we said. Now we can also break down product costs into two categories. We can break those down into direct cost and indirect cost. Direct costs, again, are easily traceable whereas indirect costs are not easily traceable. Now, direct costs, we can break that down into three categories. Well, we just talked, or two categories, excuse, excuse me. We can break that down into direct material and direct labor. The indirect cost, as we mentioned in this video, is the catch-all. If it's a product cost and it's not direct material and it's, it's not direct labor, then by default, it's gonna fall into manufacturing overhead. On the other side, period costs, we can break those down. We can break those down into selling and admin expenses. So that's the difference between product costs and period costs.